Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Good Friday, a day when we commemorate the crucifixion and death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have just dramatized what we believe through scripture, the events that led to his torturous and dehumanizing acts. Let us be ever mindful that our Lord endured this because of his unfailing love for us. We were edified with many presentations on healing and reconciliation, which no doubt have touched our hearts and would hopefully draw us to a closer relationship with God. In order for these teachings to bear fruit, we must have an abiding faith. Having faith is critical. Therefore, our discussion will center on faith. As we journey along this path of faith, we will go to the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 24 to 29 and choose as our text verses 28 through 29. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Let us pray. Our Father, with grateful hearts we come. We are ever mindful of what you did for us on Calvary. Open your hearts, our hearts to receive your word. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today we are talking about Thomas the anxious skeptic, a man who was an apostle, yet he had problems in believing and coping with the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is the foundation on which the Christian church and the Christian religions are founded. The thing that distinguishes Jesus from all other men is that he died, he, he arose, and he lives never to die again. We ought to remember that Jesus appeared to the apostles. However, we knew that there were 11 present because Judas, Judas had killed himself. But John tells us that in fact, there were only 10 apostles there when Jesus made his first appearance that Easter Sunday evening. Earlier in the day, he had appeared to Mary of Magdala. He later appeared to two on their way to Emmaus. He had a private encounter with Simon Peter. And late that evening, he appeared to the apostolic company. John tells us that there was this other apostle who was absent. His name was Thomas. The 20 verse, 24 verse says, but Thomas, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came the first time. We are not so sure why he was absent. Probably being a pragmatist, he could not take what was going on. For all that morning, some women came with a story that they went to the tomb and the tomb was open and they saw some angels who told them that Jesus was not there. Thomas probably was the first to ask, did you see him? They said no, but we saw an angel. Then Peter went running to the tomb. When he came back, he said, neither, he saw neither angel nor Jesus. All he saw was a napkin neat, neatly folded and put in a corner. 
and probably Thomas was the guy who said to Peter, did you see him? And Peter would have said, no, I didn't. Then later that day, Peter came with another story. The Lord is risen, I saw him. Then Thomas probably would have said, who else saw him? And so on and so on. You see, Thomas was a realist. Thomas was there when Jesus was crucified. He saw the wounds that Jesus bore on Calvary. Thomas knew that when a man dies, he's dead. He saw Jesus die. He did not want to hear any more stories, as we say, any Nancy story. To him, nobody could offer any real evidence. Could this be the reason why Thomas was not around when Jesus made his first appearance? Now, while Thomas was absent, something marvelous happened. So you better be careful how you absent yourself. You got annoyed because things were not going your way or because you were not being pampered or theologically or, philosoph or philosophically others are not in accord with what you think. That was Thomas's issue. He was not satisfied. His personal needs were not being met. And while he was absent, Jesus came. The basis of fellowship and relationship in the church should not be our criteria, but because we have unity of purpose, it's about doing God's work. The 25th verse tells us something else. Very interesting. When Thomas came later, the other disciples said to him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, except I see in his hands the print of the nails and thrust my hands into his side, I will not believe. Thomas did not believe just to believe. He wasn't the kind of person who blindly accepted the faith without question. Thomas questioned, doubted, thought, pondered. He had a, a challenging and inquisitive mind. Remember in John 14, we heard about Jesus going to prepare a place for us, a heavenly mansion. It was Thomas who scratched his head and asked, Jesus, we don't know where you are going and we don't know the way. Thomas did not understand what Jesus was saying. So he asked Jesus questions. None of the other disciples raised their hands and expressed their curiosity. Thomas did. In verse 26, we read, a week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. The locked door referred to in the reading represent the fear the disciples had, but it also represent Christ's power because nothing can stop him. You can shut doors to keep people out, but closed doors are no obstacle to Jesus. He came to take your business. As he came in, he invoked the blessing, peace be with you. The disciples have Christ's peace in spite of persecution by a world that hated them. Those who have faith in Christ today and show it publicly also have Christ's peace in a modern world that more often than not also hates them as he can be seen with the killing of Christians in some countries. The Holy Spirit is a defender of victims through forgiveness, even forgiveness of the victimizers. When Jesus said to the disciples, peace be with you, the kind of peace he gave them was the one set in motion by forgiveness. The disciples' future, along with Christ's forgiveness, was the main qualification for being chosen to continue Christ's work. Their fear, as represented by the locked door, showed their human weakness. Forgiveness was the core of the message Jesus gave to his disciples as he sent them out 
into the world. He gives us the same message today. We must all be ready to mediate God's grace to all those who are ready to receive it. Christ stands before God as our representative, pleading our case. Next, Jesus turned his attention to Thomas. Thomas wanted proof. Jesus did not rebuke Thomas for not believing. Instead, Jesus offered to meet his conditions. Put your fingers in my hands, touch my side. John 20, 27. The personal encounter made Jesus' resurrection real to Thomas. In fact, Thomas's answer, my Lord and my God, is the high point of John's gospel. By saying these words, doubting Thomas utters the greatest confession of faith recorded anywhere in the Bible. When Thomas got it, he got it. No one else had offered such devotion or named Jesus as God. Thomas held out for an experience of Jesus on his own terms. Only then did he make his statement of it. Jesus replies, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Like Thomas, we also have our doubts and we have questions. Like Thomas, we must not be afraid to ask these questions. Doubt has its role in building our faith. A doubter is most likely a person who is searching for God. And the godly life, the person is on a journey, a quest, a search to find God and the love of God. As persons who may have doubts, we have thousands of questions for God. Questions about life, God's existence, his purpose, and many other questions. A day does not go by without people asking these questions, especially in these COVID times. We ask, if there's a God, why are all these things happening? As doubters in today's life, we struggle to live a godly life. We struggle to find the purpose of life, to understand who God is. We struggle not as an unbeliever, but one trying to reconcile reality and faith. When we trust in Jesus Christ, that is, believe the gospel message and work of Christ as God's son and his death, resurrection and ascension as the solution to your sin. We are immediately born into the kingdom of God by the Holy Spirit and become a child of God to the faith in Christ. This is the very clear message of both John's gospel and the teaching of Paul in all his epistles. Faith is not what you see. Faith is not what you feel. Faith is believing when the evidence is scarce. Faith is trusting where you can see. Faith is putting confidence in God when it seems that all is lost. Doubt often leads to deeper faith. Doubting Thomas was very much like each of us, wanting to believe and still unsure that Jesus had actually risen. He wanted to see the scars and touch them to assure himself that it was really true. Jesus was alive and had overcome death. Just as Thomas wanted tangible proof, we in this confusing and cruel, cruel world need to be reassured of God's love and forgiveness. We get that every Sunday. Jesus is with us whenever the church comes together in his name. Just as Thomas doubted, we must also see for ourselves and receive that risen Christ is time we partake of the Eucharist. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who strengthened your apostle Thomas with sure and certain faith in your son's resurrection, grant us so perfectly and without doubt 
to believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God, that our faith may never be found wanting in your sight. Please empower us to be carriers of that faith to others. Give us the ability to share it in all its loveliness so others can know your salvation and not face your justice after having rejected your gracious gift of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen.